friends today we would be talking about chloroform and its properties Chloroform is an organic compound with the formula CHCl3 that is trichloromethane which is a one carbon compound and it had a very important use in history as a general anesthetic. It was initially used in 1842 on lab animals and later in 1847 a Scottish obstetrician demonstrated the anesthetic properties of chloroform in humans and thus started an important era of using chloroform as an anesthetic agent in medicine. Now we will be talking about the physical properties of chloroform. It is a colorless, sweet smelling dense liquid which is not soluble in water but it is soluble in organic substances like carbon tetrachloride. It is itself an organic solvent for different substances like fat, oil, wax, etc. Now we would be saying the physical properties of chloroform. First of all, I will be taking some chloroform in this flat bottom flask you can see that chloroform is stored in dark colored bottles and stoppered so that there is no photo oxidation taking place for chloroform because chloroform get oxidized in the presence of sunlight to form phosgene which is very toxic to prevent the chloroform from getting oxidized into phosgene it is always stored in dark colored bottles filled up to the stopper and containing 1% ethyl alcohol ethyl alcohol retards the decomposition of chloroform to phosgene and converts any phosgene formed into harmless ethyl carbonate Now we will be saying the difference in density of water, chloroform and concentrated sulfuric acid on the basis of specific gravity. By seeing these numbers you can see that sulfuric acid is most dense. Then comes chloroform and then water. Here I have poured these three substances separately and you can see that they do not mix each other. On talking about chloroform, chloroform is a colorless, sweet smelling organic compound with its formula being CHCl3 that is trichloromethane. Now if you pick any movie or a, that is a crime thriller movie or an investigation scene or a spy movie, you will find one of these scenes somewhere in that movie. That is a villain sneaking behind his target with a cloth soaked in chloroform and making him sniff that cloth and as soon as he smells that cloth he falls down unconscious within a few seconds now if you are interested in the chemistry of that rather than the action in that scene a question would have popped up in your mind can chloroform really knock you out that fast let's find out its answer by learning a bit about the science behind the okay to know about this we should know about the signaling system of the body how it works you know that brain sends its signals to a particular muscle telling it to work for example if i need to flex my elbow joints i need my brain to send the signals to my biceps muscle telling it to flex my elbow so these impulses are sent from the brain through the nerves and nerves have cells in them called neurons and these impulses are transmitted through one cell to the other cell by electrical signals and this electrical signals will cause something called as depolarization of the cells so what is depolarization depolarization is the change or a shift in the ionic potential between the cell membrane now there is a difference in the ionic concentration outside the cell and as well as inside the cell so that there is transmission of positively charged molecules 
from outside the cell into the cell making the cell less negative and that is depolarization and this is the process by which the impulses are transmitted from one nerve to another cell like that so the cell membrane is the important part of this process to take place and we know that cell membrane is made up of lipid lipid means fat and we know that chloroform is an organic solvent and it can dissolve fat so if a person inhales this chloroform and this chloroform can cause disruption of the cell membrane so this activity of depolarization is impaired so the impulse cannot be transmitted from one cell to another breaking the transmission of the signal coming from the brain to the muscle thereby causing inactivity of the muscles and leading to flaccidity and in the same manner the transmission of impulses across the brain will be also shut down momentarily causing the patient to lose his consciousness while sniffing this thing so in a normal case when a person sniffs this chloroform in a small dose like around 100 ppm the person will initially develop a dizziness and a headache if the concentration is raised a bit more higher the person will go unconscious but if the dose of the chloroform is higher than the safety margin it can cause cardiac arrest and respiratory arrest because of the paralysis of the muscles for which help in breathing and since we cannot control the rate or the dose at which we are giving a person the anesthetic already replaced chloroform with safer anesthetic agents in modern medicine another thing that you would be interested to know is how long does it take to make a person unconscious with sniffing this chloroform in movies we have seen that as soon as the victim sniffs the chloroform he would go unconscious within a few seconds but actually this cannot happen because we need a persistent high concentration of chloroform in the body for approximately 5 minutes to uh, make the unconsciousness set in so this is not a plausible scenario where the victim is getting unconscious becoming unconscious within a few seconds of sniffing the chloroform chloroform is a volatile liquid which means that on keeping the chloroform for a little time outside it will cause the chloroform to lose its effectiveness and here comes another scenario where the villain will be waiting for the target to come with a cloth soaked in chloroform in his hand and when the target comes he will make him sniff and fall unconscious this is also not a practical case because by the time he waits with this chloroform soaked cloth this chloroform in it would have already been oxidized and it would have lost its effectiveness hence the person cannot make him go we already said that chloroform is an organic solvent and now we will be testing the solubility of halogens both bromine and iodine in chloroform to my left i have the test tube containing the iodide salt and to the right we have the bromide salt solution into both the test tubes i am now adding chloroform since we already saw that chloroform is denser than water you can see that chloroform is occupying the bottom layer of the test tube into this we will be adding chlorine water chlorine water was prepared by mixing potassium permanganate with concentrated hydrochloric acid until the color of the potassium permanganate is discharged After adding the chlorine water we will mix the contents of the test tube by shaking the test tube vigorously Now we will keep this test tube undisturbed and you can see that the color of the chloroform layer is changing Now we see the reaction of chloroform with concentrated nitric acid Chloroform reacts with nitric acid and replaces the hydrogen atom in chloroform with the nitro group forming chloropicrid also called as nitrochloroform
Now I am taking some chloroform in this test tube with the help of a glass dropper. We should not take the chloroform and keep it in a transparent bottle for a longer time because photo oxidation can take place. So before every reaction we should take fresh chloroform from the dark amber colored bottle and use it. After taking the chloroform, I will now add concentrated nitric acid into it. When chloroform reacts with concentrated nitric acid, chloropicrin is formed, which is a liquid with a boiling point of around 112 degrees Celsius. The importance of chloropicrin is that it is used as an insecticide. Now we see the reduction reaction. Chloroform on reduction with zinc granules and hydrochloric acid gives methylene chloride. Zinc granules react with hydrochloric acid to produce nascent hydrogen which reacts with the chloroform forming the methylene chloride. After taking the chloroform, now I will be adding zinc granules into it. Zinc and hydrochloric acid has been used in organic chemistry in various places for producing nascent hydrogen which will result in reduction of the organic compound. If in this reaction if I use zinc powder the reaction will be different. The chloroform reacts with zinc powder and hydrochloric acid to produce methane gas and not methylene chloride. Okay. After adding the zinc granule here, I am adding the concentrated hydrochloric acid. You can see that initially the zinc reacts with concentrated hydrochloric acid to produce nascent hydrogen which reacts with the chloroform and form methylene chloride. Now the hydrolysis of chloroform. Chloroform on treatment with aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide gets hydrolyzed to yield sodium formate. This reaction actually takes place in two steps. In the first step, chloroform reacts with sodium hydroxide and replaces all the chlorine atoms with the hydroxyl group and then it hydrolyzes which means it releases one molecule of water to form formic acid. In the next step, it reacts with one more molecule of sodium hydroxide to yield sodium formate. The chlorination of chloroform when chlorine gas is passed through chloroform, it forms carbon tetrachloride. In this reaction, we produced chlorine gas by reaction of potassium permanganate with concentrated hydrochloric acid. I am preparing the chlorine gas in this test tube. I have already taken concentrated hydrochloric acid in it and I have added potassium permanganate. You can see that there is a vigorous reaction which leads to the formation of chlorine gas. I am connecting a gas pipe and the end of this tubing I am keeping it into the chloroform. And you can see that bubbles of chlorine gas is being passed through the chloroform.
Now with this carbon tetrachloride formed we will be trying a reaction and this reaction is known as the Remus Diamond reaction and with carbon tetrachloride we do that by reacting it with phenol in the presence of an alkali like sodium hydroxide this reaction will give us salicylic acid Now the same reaction that is the Reimer Diamond reaction we are going to perform it with chloroform. Chloroform reacts with phenol and sodium hydroxide to give us salicylaldehyde. Now for the very important carbylamine reaction. Here when chloroform is warmed with a primary amine and alcoholic potassium hydroxide gives us a very obnoxious no seating order of carbylamine also known as isocyanide. The primary amine I used was aniline and I took alcoholic potassium hydroxide and when I heated it I obtained phenyl isocyanide. The carbylamine reaction is for primary amines. Primary amines with chloroform in the presence of a basic medium forms isocyanide also known as carbylamine. This reaction is also known as Hofmann's isocyanide synthesis or Sidesef's isocyanide test. Since carbylamine reaction is only given by primary amines, this test is used to identify the presence of primary amines in qualitative analysis of organic compounds. The phenyl isocyanide formed here by the reaction of the aniline with chloroform and potassium hydroxide is toxic. Hence, before disposing of it directly into the drain, we have to first decompose the phenyl isocyanide. We do that by adding concentrated hydrochloric acid and then we pour it off safely. Now we talk a little bit about the recent applications of chloroform. Chloroform with hydrogen fluoride forms monochlorodifluoromethane which is a precursor for Teflon. Chloroform is also used as a solvent for fats, oils, rubber, wax, gutta percha and so on. Chloroform is also used as an important laboratory reagent as a source for dichlorocarbin that is the CCL2 group and we already saw one of its reaction involving dichlorocarbene. 